you can do exactly the same process as you do in the NCBI at the Influenza Research Database. Uh, so you can search sequences and strains. And you've got an interface which is pretty similar to the other one, but notice that the segments are different. That one you had NEP1 and 2, you had PA, PB, you had lots more proteins in the list in the NCBI one than you've got here. Here you've just got the eight segments of the genome. In the NCBI one, they're based on the different proteins that are expressed. So for example, the M protein contains M1 and M2. So that gives you two entries in the NCBI one. Which one do you use? It's up to you. Now, in the entire history of flu, and we've been studying flu for quite a long time, we have 721,000 genome segments. Remember, that's across all of these eight different things. So I divide that by eight to tell you how many genomes we've got. And bear in mind that we have 400 and I don't know what it is today, thousand from COVID. And we've been doing flu the, since the 1950s. COVID has swamped us with data. So again, you can go for genome segments or protein. Okay, if you go to protein, it gives you more of a thing to pick from. So the variants, so these are the, you've got NS1 and NS2. Now I've got a few million. No, that's not particularly good. M1, M2. Right, pick your virus type, A. Your subtype, I don't want anyone, but if I wanted to pick, actually, let's pick out the H5N8. I'm going to pick out all the H5N8s because they're interesting at the minute. Strain name. Remember, those strain names are really tricky to know. So here's an example of one which is called A Chicken Laos 16 2008. Like, how are you going to guess that? That's not happening. So when I click on H5N8, I've reduced this amount of things now down to 5,539. Let's ignore the date range because it's not important. Now I want to pick just the HAs again, the hemagglutinins. So once I've clicked on that, it goes down to, still thinking, 379. That's a much more manageable and reasonable amount. I can deal with 379. It's not going to kill me. Uh, this has got some classification schemes built into it. I'm going to click on the H5. Uh, no, actually, I'm not going to search on H5 clad. So let's put that clade. So put that to zero. I just want to identify the H5 clade. Uh, do I wish to pick a host? I'm not going to pick any host or geography. Geographic location, you can have. Uh, by continent instead of northern temperate, southern temperate, or tropical. You can pick a country if you want to. You could pick a country in, in CBI as well. Uh, remember, I customized the output that you've got. You can do that in uh, this one as well. I think we have to do it after I've done the search. So we do the search and get us 379 sequences. Right. So it's showing me 50 per page. If I click on this button, it's selected all 379, which is what I want. So I can then download all the sequences like I did before. So it can process them. Now, this is the uh, an alternative format called GFF. Uh, which is the other one I described, sort of gene bank format. There's segment faster, there's protein faster. So segment faster will include, if you put the DNA in, will include all the non-coding parts as well. Uh, CDs is the coding regions. Protein faster will give me the output as proteins. It will by default call it protein faster results. Don't want that, so I'm going to call it H5N8. Protein. Oh, what was it? Oh, what you should do 
I'm going to show you good practice for once. First thing, put the date that you downloaded it so you know when the data, what part of the database is current and what's new. Tell it which database you got it from, Influenza Research Database. You say what protein it is, it's H A. You say what subtype it is, it's H5N8. So it's the hemagglutin H5N8. That's enough information to have it unique. Now, I put the date in, in that particular order, because then when you list your files in your directory, it will put them in date order correctly. If you put it in 122021, then uh, when you have 112, no, 312021 will come after it. But 312021 is the 3rd of January and it should be in front of it. So by putting the year first, then the month and then the day, you have a consistent way of indexing your files and getting them in the order that you actually downloaded them. Now, choose default custom format for how you want to do it. So first thing, protein accession number. Second thing, date. Third thing, country. Then you can put in US state as well. This one has that option, NCBI didn't. Uh, I need to know the host species and I need to know the subtype. Uh, I don't need to know subtype particularly here because they're all H5N1. But the one thing that I do need to know in this case is the H5 clade because they're all parts of H5 and that's just something I need for analysis. Don't worry about it until later. I just need to know about it and I need to know the strain. Always put strain last because it's confusing and difficult to automate processing. So I'm going to have all of those things and I press download. And it will now download those 379 sequences in fast day format. It might compress them because there's 379. Yeah, it has this sent it as a zip file. So if I go into the zip file, there is my faster file, so I can just unzip it. Yeah, that'll do. Right. No, I've double clicked on it and it's automatically picked it up to use Mega. Ugh. Oh, well, such is life. I've got Mega installed. I was going to open it with the protein uh, viewer. It's opened it with Mega instead. It doesn't really make any difference. So Mega is an, a program which allows you to look at the sequences in a better way than looking at them as plain text. So when you look at it like this, you can clearly see where there are changes. So there's some here which have lots of changes. There's lots of them that have no changes at all. And occasionally you can see some weird characters. So there's an X here because the nucleotide sequence is ambiguous and they can't tell what the um, particular amino acid is going to be. But considering it is E in every other sequence, apart from other ones which have X, I'm pretty sure oh, there's one where it's V. That's fairly unusual. Uh, I would be pretty confident in calling those X's for being E's. So you can hand edit it if you want to, to remove anything like that. In protein space, it is colored by the type of things that they do. So here you've got an obvious things getting out of alignment. So what's happened here is you've got an insertion so after this point, so if you look at the top, you have stars. So the stars tell you when the amino acid is the same in every single row within that column. So you, you've got a piece here where you've got lots of variability. That's fairly usual because that front part of the uh, influenza virus is, is like that. 
but then you see you get lots of stars because it's pretty well conserved and it's pretty identical all the way along now suddenly you get up to that region where you saw that funny slope so you see that this bit obviously needs to go across one so what you've lost is one amino acid somewhere in here and this has forced them out of alignment so now there's no stars at all for the rest of the sequence because they're all out of alignment and then you get to the end which ends ICI and this one's got ICH which is very peculiar and this one's a lot shorter it's lost three amino acids so what you need to do is the process of alignment which we'll come to next week but there's a, it can uh, this program uh, this within mega you can use some programs for doing alignment I'm just wondering if it'll do that in a reasonable amount of time. It's only 379 sequences. Yeah, it's done it quickly. That's better. So now all the ICIs at the end are aligned. You've got loads of stars all the way through. And you've got this funny set of gaps here, which you probably want to tweak a bit by editing that by hand, because it's not done a very good job. So it's created a gap here of two to put this RK, RK. But if I just move this RK across to here, then it makes more sense. So I have to overrule the computer program and put it in by hand. And it's done the same there. Anyway. We don't need to think about alignment, particularly this week. No, I don't. If I just opened it with the text browser, there you can see that I've got the right kind of headings on each one of the files. So it says South Africa. It can't, it doesn't NA because there is no, um, it's not got a US state. It says it's from a penguin and then it doesn't have the H5 clay number and then it has its, this is the strain. So it's a African penguin, South Africa, 4276. This is American Wigeon, 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 or Oregon Ansus Cygnoides. So that's some kind of, yeah, it's a goose. I thought Ansus was Cygnoides was swans. Anyway, this one's being pretty vague. Avian, it comes from a bird. But they're not quite sure what it was. <sighs> bical teal, bical teal, bical teal, bical teal, bical teal, bical teal. It's a lot of bical teal, broiler ducks, 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 buzzards, egrets, chickens, and various other things. Right, so that's the second database. 